What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with Dr. Angela DeRosa. Angela, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) It's awesome to have you. Let me give you a bio real quick. She is a dynamic professional on a mission to change the face of women's health and wellness. More than 25 years experience in the medical field, both on the pharmaceutical side and in clinical practice. As an internationally recognized authority on women's hormonal health, Dr. DeRosa understands the range of health issues that women face and is very enthusiastic about educating patients on the realities of menopause. My wife is in perimenopause and the risk factors of hormonal health imbalances. So it's an honor to have you here today as you and I were talking off air. It's a amazing time to be alive, but it's an even more amazing time to be a physician in a community of people now who have been decimated by the V, decimated by the the C, destroyed, as you know, in the last two years from being locked out, stuck in their houses, unable to exercise, unable to eat correctly. Not that anybody really does in America, but you know, (laughs) it, it made it worse. And so now we have this, like I call it, this gigantic malaise of people who are not health optimized and are now going to be looking towards to people like you and of course me to give them better answers and better solutions. So I like to ask my people when they come on the show nowadays and, you know, for the purposes of everyone watching this, it is two days before Christmas in 2021, December 23rd. I think the show is going to run in January or February. I don't know yet, but uh, what, in your opinion, where are we going from a health standpoint in 2022 and beyond? Well, that's a tricky question, but overall, when you look at kind of what's been happening here in the United States over the last two decades since I've started practicing, it is not a positive movement. And in fact, we continue to see people getting sicker and sicker, um, largely being promoted by Big Pharma and various other organizations that make a shit ton of money, forget, forgive my language. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> on the backs of our health. And and it's not to say that, and I, I want to preface this right out of the gate, and I'll answer your question even more in detail, but it's not that Big Pharma, and I know it's done, 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 you know, they're like the evil empire. I mean, they have a role to play in medicine. Yep. But what I don't, uh, and I worked for Big Pharma for 10 years and I learned the ins and outs, but unfortunately I learned a lot of the bad side of that too. But we shouldn't be going to that direction at the exclusion of things that we can do uh, personally, like proper nutrition, um, trying to mitigate some of the environmental damage, but also the role of compounding pharmacies and the role of hormones, which seem to be the quote unquote danger for the FDA in a lot of these organizations when actually that's where we should be. We should be on the preventative side versus waiting until everyone's on test door. And then we start to intervene with all these medications that frankly only make people sicker. And we're watching them do a slow march to death. So I've been watching this, this kind of evolution over the last two years. And as an internal medicine doctor at a base, although I specialize in hormone therapies and thank God I did, because actually people get better. Um, but watching kind of the mindset and when we even talk about COVID and everything, 
nobody seems to want to address the underlying fact that the majority of the people that are dying in the hospitals are, are sick, overweight, or have a lot of chronic illness and sick, the yeah. high risk patients. But those patients, that patient population is dramatically increasing because we don't take care of ourselves. We eat crappy food. We don't yeah. exercise. And God knows it's in our water and environment and all those other <laughs> things. But we expect these little pills to reverse that. So it, until you start to address the underlying issues that affect our health, I mean, a lot of what we're trying to do is nonsensical. And I don't see that getting any better in 2022. And in fact, I think that there's going to be a lot more division when it comes to adrenal modification and stress and hormonal health. And nobody wants to address that. Or in fact, and it, and it surprises me even to this day that the medical community even slams a lot of that intervention and people like myself are deemed heretics. Yeah. Well, okay. So you, that's a lot you said there. Well, I know. I can no, no, no. I mean, all amazing. No, no, no. All amazing. Nobody comes on the Jay Campbell podcast today talking about hormones who's not at the top of their field because I literally am bored. All I talk about now is consciousness. I mean, <laughs> it's perfect timing though, because my course on, you know, how to optimize your testosterone launches tomorrow. And I spent mm -hmm. literally two years in the, in the making of it. You know, it's very technically yeah. precise. You know, obviously I got signed off from doctors and stuff that I work with, but you're, you're in the right place at the right time. And as I always say, everything is divinely timed, right? Like it's all happening exactly as God intends. It doesn't matter our resistance to that statement. It's the truth. So you said a lot of really awesome things. I want to go back to the beginning though, because you said about preventative health and so many people don't, we don't want to talk shit about doctors. You and I could disparage the medical community for an entire I mean, podcast. Most people are well intended. They're just getting bad information. So. That's what I was about to say, right? Mm -hmm. Is it really the doctor's fault that they don't teach anything about nutrition or hormones in med school? No. no. Even the endocrinologists and the urologists, as you know, only learn anatomy and physiology. They don't mm -hmm. learn how to actually use the symphony yeah. of hormones to help people get to health. I mean, I laugh when people say I'm going to an endocrinologist. I'm like, if you're yeah. going to get your hormones optimized, you're in real trouble. Yeah. You're not going to the right place. <laughs> They're the worst offenders. I'm an ob even though I have many friends on this profession. That, that is true. Okay. So you and I both know that we can't blame doctors. We also can't blame the way they manage their practice now from a managed care standpoint, because as you know, it's triage, you know, yeah. how can I see, 50 or 60 patients in an eight hour period. I don't have time to truly diagnose their health, nor do I want to, because then I don't get paid. Right. So mm -hmm. you, meaning you as the patient, you watching the show. And as I told doc off the air, I have a lot of women that watch the show who are constantly saying, I want to I, I need a, a female healthcare specialist, an expert. Well, here, the, here she is. <laughs> so, so, but, but the reality is, is that those people, who still want to put their copay out there and say, but Jay, I can only afford my $40 copay or my $60 copay. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get Dr. Okay. Angela. You're yeah. not going to get the doctors who can actually help you. You are going to get those managed care people who don't give a shit. And again, yeah. not their fault. It's their business. Now this is the, me the medical insurance business. Mm -hmm. And as you know, they're going to write a script for a purple or a pink yeah. or a yellow pill. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I mean. I wrote a book called how your doctor is slowly killing you a women's hormonal yep. survival guide. And it really addresses that is that doctors are well intended. Um, but the sad thing is that we get almost nothing other than basic understanding of access right. and endocrinology and nobody right. really treats us anything about hormonal health. And the unfortunate part is the, the way they do treat the little that they do has a complete lack of understanding about basic physiology and, right. and in particular women. So just for instance, when you actually talk about testosterone, which to me, if you put a gun to my head, I'm going to take testosterone or estradiol any day, but we predominantly think of that as a male hormone, but ironically, it's actually our most abundant hormone in females and nobody seems to want to address it, even though it does the exact same things for men as it does for women. So in other right. words, it controls executive function thinking, our ability to burn sugar and glucose management, which by the way, if we don't have, leads to weight gain and diabetes and all the cardiovascular risk. It leads to mood disorders, at least all these complex symptoms in men. A man walks into an office, a doctor is going to take that seriously. They're going to give them their erectile dysfunction drugs, even though those may kill them, by the way. Yeah. And 
and their um, testosterone. But a woman walks in, we get an antidepressant told you're crazy and sent on our way. So unfortunately, traditional medicine is, is really designed to look for just giving us pills, sending us on our merry way, not spending the time. And you bring up a valid point, the folks that do the type of medicine that I do, unfortunately, in order to survive, and it's, you have to leave that paradigm because you can't really focus on preventative care and nutrition and, and hormones and all those things in a five minute appointment. Right. But also what a lot of folks don't understand is that, and I've seen this get worse and worse and worse. It's like, it is so um, uh, aggressively, um, I guess the, the docs that don't believe in what I'm doing or don't believe in what folks like myself are doing, they will come after us with brutal, like di just like um, hatred almost. Yeah. Of and course. they, they want to take us out and it's it's not only so we have to so if we're working in an insurance company situation like a with a big medical plan if we don't practice toward traditional endocrine guidelines first off they're going to deny payment right second off they may throw us in front of the medical board saying we don't know oh, what yeah. we're doing, and then we could potentially lose our license right and also doctors who don't agree with how we're practicing are doing that too so you almost have to you have to practice so defensively and try to reduce your risk and unfortunately, you can't practice in an environment that puts you at high risk. And you ask any one of my colleagues who, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of us. Yeah. Jeremy's growing, but I don't know one of us who hasn't had a board complaint by another physician or something that's put right. us at risk of losing our license. Well, so a couple things there. Again, brilliant insights. Uh, and thank God I'm not a physician, right? <laughs> it's, it's funny because I've actually, by not being a physician, have a lot of physicians you know, work through me and say, hey, I want you to say this because yeah. I can't say that. As you know, you know the state, le the state licensing medical board audit is the bane of every single doctor yeah. out there. And as you said, there are literally, yeah. let's just say it, there are quack physicians who are jealous of physicians that are making money in the capital. Or, or they're old school and they don't, they believe in traditional trainings and thinkings and getting them to open their mind is a little bit challenging. In particular on the female side, because most of them are men sitting on those boards and they don't have a clue about female physiology. And honestly, you're being nice. I'm not. <laughs> they're quacks. They're quacks. I don't care if they're following a hundred years old, you know, mm -hmm. medical jargon and you know the system and all that stuff. It's not mm -hmm. for the patient. It's not no. in the patient's best interest. No. And if you're not in the interest of the patient, and you can't be when you're attached to insurance. So mm -hmm. what I was going to say to you is, that, you know, and I've said this a million times, and obviously I've learned this from my doctors, mm -hmm. is that you can't truly run a wellness functional medicine, integrative medicine, you know, I call it health optimization practice mm -hmm. until you completely detach from insurance yeah. because that is going to hold you back. You're going That's to have true. these people who are going to question you, like you said, and then you're going to have the jealousy. I mean, how many times have you heard of doctors who run amazingly cash pay centers who literally get called up due to some inquiry from a competitive physician or whatever? And it's All the time. I mean, I've been, uh, even I know you get competitors who don't want to and they'll come after you. And, and unfortunately, malpractice is not as easy as people think to have a malpractice suit. But putting up a board complaint is very, very easy. A patient right. can do it. A, a doctor can do it. And they have to investigate. And unfortunately, right. all they right. take is to see something that doesn't fall in the endocrine guidelines. Um, and they all of a sudden are on this witch hunt. But what's so interesting to me, and again, when you start to talk about the big pharma and the conflicts of interest at the FDA and all those different levels. What's so fascinating when you start to look at those quote unquote guidelines, most often they're the people who are making those decisions. It's based on expert opinion and not true evidence-based medicine, or they're right. only taking the evidence that comes out of big pharma. And Oh, by the way, pharma is sponsoring right. a lot of those organizations that are making That's those exactly right. How That's could exactly you right. possibly not have a conflict of interest and drive you, the sales of your own drugs while excluding things that would really truly benefit patients? And by the way, to that point, you know, Dr. Anthony J wrote mm -hmm. Estrogeneration and in, his, in that book proves how easy it is to get bought and paid for peer review. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people talk about, you know, studies and citations and again, peer review, and that's are all bought and paid for by Big Pharma too. Right. Any and you study- can, you, can, you can eliminate whatever research you exactly. want from your study. And I mean, what's so interesting is the FDA has been really on a big witch hunt right now with the compounding pharmacy. Right. And I was asked to present in front of that committee and I actually, we became one of the reviewers because I wanted to see what the hell they were going to say and provide feedback, even though they didn't listen to anything that I had to say. 
Um, but the, it was already a bought and paid for. And actually we found, we, had, we hired a legal team that had a smoking gun that act, we found the smoking gun, that this was completely driven, agenda driven. And the FDA, and I understand the FDA is there to protect the po major population and they have a role to serve. But when you have big pharma trying to influence you and paying the FDA all these dollars and cents, and they have people who work for those big pharma and lobbyists who are driving those agendas, how on earth could you possibly come to the conclusions that truly benefit patients? They're benefiting industries that are paying for that. And they're right now on a, because uh, compounding pharmacy is probably taking billions of dollars away from big pharma right now. Yeah. And they want to shut down that competition. So what do they do? They say, oh, there's no clinical utility for hormones in women, or they're not safe. And oh, by the way, we submitted no clinical utility. thousands and thousands and thousands of evidence-based uh, research. And what did they choose? They chose 13 articles, nine, which were all about DHA and had nothing to do with hormones, even though DHA right. is hormone. Um, the, but the basic ones we were fighting for, but they chose nonsensical things to say that that was the only true expert or the true quality, high quality research when it was complete bullshit. Yeah. So, so but that's, I mean, but yeah. that, but that's the way it is, doc. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so the bigger question is I just came back from a for M oh, not yeah. evidence, not evidence-based medicine, but yeah, it was there. A for M is a fun, uh, if you ever get it for those of you who've not been a for M, the convention hall is really interesting. Yeah, oh, I mean, you get a chance to see all of the businesses, right? You see all the cutting edge things that are trying to make it. But at the end of the day, um, I spoke to some people that you know, I won't mention their names in the compounding world. And they told me, which isn't a surprise to you or me, but they told me that peptides are about gone, that oh, their, yeah. time, their time is running out. And the sad part is, as you know, peptides are the ones now and future of medicine in their modalities and all the things that they can do and i this is really what i believe and i want your opinion your insights on this i truly think that everything in medicine from the allopath allopathic model to what you and i preach about which is again you know health optimization wellness mm -hmm. it's going to bifurcate completely Oh, yeah. And what That's will end up good. happening? Yeah, well, I mean, it already is, right? But what will end up happening is that all of the peptides will literally become research chemical based companies or manufacturers or whatever. And every patient, you know, slash lab rat that uses them will have to sign a waiver stating that, you know, they're using it on their laboratory animal or whatever it is. But I mean, it's not like they're going to go away. There are research chemical companies on every corner. You and I both know that doctors are using most of them now too because they can't get legitimate peptides for their patients from compounders because the compounders are scared. But there were a number of compounders there. And as you know, they're still selling unre unregulated, you know, uh, you know, off-label peptides. Yeah. But the people that are smart told me that, look, dude, by the end of 2022, Compound pharmacies are not going to be putting peptides into there because that's the no. FDA's target in 2022. So oh, what yeah. do you think They've is going to happen? Starting in this year, and so I mean, and what people, so we hear the word peptide and we think it's this nebulous, it's very experimental, maybe very progressive, innovative thing. And ironically, when you start to look, insulin's a peptide. So I mean, we exactly. have a lot of things that are, are peptides and PTH, a parathyroid right. hormone that we use to treat with osteoporosis. And so there are lots of already proved peptides. But where this really became starting you know, to become an issue is when they got into the growth hormone releasing hormone peptides, which unfortunately they got kind of under this umbrella that they must be like growth hormone and the different things that are being used in the bodybuilding space and that they're these synthetic horrible products. But peptides are really these really interesting amino acids that all they're doing is ten telling you the organ that they're designed to target to produce the body's own natural physiologic level of that particular hormone. So for instance, samorolin or CJC ipamorolin, um, all these different ones of peptides, these growth hormone releasing peptides, they tell the pituitary to release some growth hormone at which always declines as we get older. And when that happens, we don't burn fat effectively. We, our cognition starts to go down. We don't sleep as well, which we need restorative sleep for all kinds of things. And um, so, that, that industry really, there's a, a huge misunderstanding. And then you get people at the regulatory level who just assume that it's this because they don't, they know enough to be dangerous in that sense. And then they say, okay, we're going to target this and they're going to go after that. And then they're going to only, they're going to shut down all the big pharma uh, companies or the big company pharmacies that are making these products, which they deem dangerous. Or in other words, HCG, which we use commonly for men to right. help to either atrophy or to upregulate sperm or actually in weight loss. 
they deemed right. it a biologic, so we can't compound it anymore. So now you're going to spend thousands of dollars to obtain it if you can get a physician to write it on label right. versus the very minimal amount. And then the really terrible thing is that there's other peptides that are now kind of caught in that whole thing. So you have PT-141, which helps with sexual health. Yep. Or my personal favorite, BPC-157, which sure. not helps with gastropathies, but muscle in your, uh, uh, injuries, soft tissue injuries, neuro neuropathic kind of situations. Yep. And those are wonderful little products that yep. have very little to no side effects that help the body heal itself. But That's the exactly FDA right. is using their their big arm and saying, well, if it's not FDA approved, it can't possibly save. So we're going to shut you down. And we do things off label all the time in medicine. And what right. really scares the bejesus out of me is that physicians are supposed to be independent and have the ability to practice medicine as they see fit. But now all of a sudden we're having all these regulatory agencies are saying, nope, you can't do that. We're going to tell you exactly how to practice, what products you can use and how to use them. And if we don't like it or someone didn't pay us off, Forget about it. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon. Well, so do you foresee, because obviously I'm, I'm in agreement, uh, I won't go as far as saying it's going away, but I do have physicians in my network that are telling me, oh, hormones, are they're going to regulate them at some point too. Oh, they're trying like, to. They're right. Like, trying so what to. happens, Angela? Let, let, let's, let's just, let's play worst case scenario. Let's say that that's what happens. I mean, there's no way that hormones are going to go away. Is this meaning that everybody that wants to optimize their hormones, and you know that there are captains of industry, both men and women that are on this and doing this, of course, to maintain who they are, what are they going to do? Go to black market, gray market pathways and routes? Oh, people are going to find ways to get what they need. I mean, it's, and the people who get it and understand it. I mean, I've been on, I went through menopause at 35 and I've been on hormone replacement for a long time and pellets in particular. I mean, I, I, God forbid that hormones should go away in particular testosterone for women, but that's actually the really big target. And I encourage people to look at the website, savemycompounds.com yep. because we yep. need to scream. We need to get our legislators and it's going to be to the point where we have someone um, at the Senate level or someone who could say, okay, I'm not, I don't want my hormones to go away because they've been positively affected. And what's interesting and what's fascinating to me, and this is where I really get pissed off because there's a huge gender bias component to this that most people don't realize. And I alluded to it earlier about testosterone in women, and they try to say um, that it's not essential for women, but it's absolutely- Of course it's essential for women. Essential That's for women. That's ridiculous. So we have zero FDA approved testosterone products on the market for women, and men have a whole host of them. If yeah. they take our compounding ability away, women are gonna be predominantly screwed. The men will be able to get their products. The women will not. And you can't tell me that's not a huge gender bias problem. And there's organizations and coalitions that I'm involved with now that we're trying to stop this. And, and people need to be really concerned because this is, a, this is a kind of behind the scenes, quiet endeavor that's going on. And it's happening insidiously. And if we don't pay attention, it's going to come a day in the next couple of years where all of a sudden, poof, our hormones are gone. And we have yeah. no right to get them other than the ones that are synthetic or fda approved and um, we won't have it available and, and well, we well let's let's go deeper on that what you just mm -hmm. said because there's something bigger and more underwriting and yes you and i know there are now studies coming out we were talking off air there's a huge article that just came out in nature that they both target luteinizing hormone receptors which mm -hmm. as you know over time the third degree third or second or third uh downstream effect third degree downstream effect is going to be suppression of hormone mm -hmm. so you're going to be dealing with a massive i mean this is going to be an endocrine collapse across mankind of people who have suboptimal hormones and obviously you know very observed deficiencies so it's already happening so my concern it's not a concern it's just a thought to you for your feedback is how would they literally be able to outlaw hormones. And we know they're making efforts to do that, but how could they do it knowing the crisis is coming? 
Well, and let's be more specific though. They're not looking to outlaw hormones. They're outlawing. They want to get rid of compounded hormones. Right, they want is, FDA approved. They only want the FDA approved, which largely are pills. 10X the price. On. Yeah, they increase their, the price is horrible, but the oral tablets for women, they increase clotting risk where the non-orals don't. I mean, I can go into a whole lecture yep. about the pros and cons of the difference compounding, but we have to protect it because the only ones that will be available are the FDA. And again, that predominantly affects women. But the long-term effects of these vaccines, I mean, I don't think we all have a full understanding of what that's going to look like, including the endocrine disruption that can occur. Right. And, and, I, and I see both sides of the fence. I mean, I've seen patients who are deathly afraid of COVID, but what I really struggle with is the kind of overall just blanket mandate for everybody. We should be, you should look at risk benefits as just about anything in life and medicine. And, and unfortunately, endocrine organ systems are tiny little sensitive organs that are so susceptible to disruptors in our environment and even physical things. And, and if, if there's going to be a problem, it's going to be at a mass scale. And unfortunately, hormone deficiencies are not a joking matter because they actually are the key um, components of preventing um, endothelial hardening, which can lead to high blood pressure and cardiac illness. It, they, testosterone deficiency leads to prediabetes, diabetes, and cardiovascular risk, the osteoporosis, the whole host of things. And our population's already getting sicker and sicker. I mean, I, it's going to be interesting to see, and God forbid, what it looks like in 20 years from now. So. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you talk about, I mean, here you have the whole young population of women who are on oral birth control pills that everyone, oh. and, and that they're great for pregnancy prevention, but you need to understand the indirect things that are happening. Exactly. And all oral birth control pills cause 100% testosterone deficiency in That's women. That's exactly with right. Mood disorders, weight gain, um, all kinds of host of problems for our young women. And we're throwing them on that with no regard. And we wonder why our young population, aside from social media causing anxiety, panic, <laughs> these birth control pills and let them know they're all gaining weight and they're becoming obese and nobody's addressing right. the underlying cause of it. And if you at least understand what you're doing, you can mitigate that or consider like an IUD, which won't don't affect your ovary. So, I mean, it's so complex in so many ways, but again, we do so many things to patients in the name of treating them in medical science that we don't give any regard to these tiny little organ systems that are truly essential for our overall health and well-being. I, I think you can make an argument, and this is really coming from Dr. J's book, that mm -hmm. we know that because of birth control and the water supply over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. now freshwater, or I'm sorry, fish, male fish that are put into you know any freshwater stream or tributary within one year become female. So as you said, mm -hmm. the same thing is happening with women. You know, they're becoming emasculated. I mean, you know, everybody is in a hormonal toxic in, yeah. environment. The men, they become, they're all becoming estrogenized. Men, literally yeah. men are like women, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, all of it is a disaster, but- And if you don't want marijuana about, and cannabis, and I mean, there's some role for it in a medical sense, but what people don't realize, and in particular men, it causes impotence because it raises their estrogen levels. So exactly. I mean, there's a benefit to cannabis in some areas of medicine, but if you're smoking it for recreational use chronically, and I'm seeing all these young men, they're coming in with their- But it's natural, doc. Yeah. You got to know what you're doing. <laughs> Be hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. There is no common sense, unfortunately, in the age of today for the young people. As you said, social media. I mean, look, if this is where you get your information from, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, hey, Google, you have no discernment and you have no critical thinking skills. And you know this, they don't even have textbooks in college anymore. Oh, I know. It's crazy. People don't even read. Well, it's just How a large supposed to that we lost common sense and critical thinking skills. Common and sense is not so common. And when I look at medicine and a lot of things when I do my teachings, because I train clinicians across the globe and in particular here in the U.S., 
a lot of when I look at how I'm training folks, it's all about biological common sense and mother nature. And what did mother nature intend with certain things? And right. you shouldn't extrapolate beyond that. I mean, I mean, we look at the role of progesterone and a lot of people use it blanketly for hormone replacement, which is actually inappropriate in a lot of cases. Right. Progesterone was really designed to prepare the body for pregnancy. Or people always ask me, well, if women go through menopause at the age of 50, shouldn't we just leave them? Mother nature wanted the ovaries to die. And that's but that's, that wasn't the intent. Mother nature wanted us not to get pregnant after the age of 50 because we're not biologically sound right. to care for a child well into our 70s and 80s. But the unfortunate indirect consequence now, because we're living past menopause and living much longer through medical intervention, that though that organ, which provided a whole host of wonderful hormones, estrogen, testosterone for us on a day to day basis is now taking a hit. But when doctors ask me, well, we shouldn't be replacing estrogen. Well, let's go. I'm just going to give an analogy here. So. When you go into a physician's office and they check your thyroid, they often, most docs will just check what's called a TSH, thyroid stimulating right. hormone and a T4 with that, which isn't the whole story. It's only a partial no. part of it, which is a no. problem. We could talk an hour about that. But if your TSH comes back, say at 100, your body is pro practically, you are so hypothyroid, your bad patient is probably on the verge of going into a coma and it's severe, severe hypothyroidism. So that TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone and how I describe it to patients, it's a whip. The pituitary puts that whip out to go beat the thyroid into making more thyroid. And if the thyroid's not acting efficient, the, the more whips are going to come out to go beat that thyroid. So that TSH whip goes higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's really the brain's attempt to get that thyroid to work. So, so, but if a doctor sees a TSH of 100, they are absolutely positively going to jump on treating that TSH with thyroid medication or a hormone or whatever that. But what's so interesting to me, this exactly happens at the ovarian level. So if the ovary fails until the day you die, the brain is going to attempt to go get that ovary to work to produce its testosterone and estradiol and how it does it with its own whip called FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. So the higher that goes up, the brain is in, in vain attempting to beat this retired little ovary that's in menopause to get it to produce hormones. And usually when women come in postmenopausally, their FSHs are over 100. So that's the brain physiologically telling us it is pissed off at the estradiol and testosterone levels, wants it to be fixed. But we ignore that, but yet we'll treat the thyroid differently or other hormones in the endocrine system. Why are we ignoring the brain's attempt to correct something that it's telling us physiologically is problematic? But we get it gets ignored all the time. It makes zero sense biologically to me. So let me ask you this, because this is the stuff that I get, and it's not one of our bullet points, but it's good because you're an <laughs> expert. Um, you know, again, women will ask me, you know, why don't you ever allow them to talk about what's the optimal way to optimize a woman's hormones as they're aging? So I know there are no blueprints or templates. Every woman is and man is biochemically unique. Yeah. We're all kind of one. But can you maybe just offer some general strategy slash ideas on what you think should be optimized because obviously you've said a lot of really high level stuff here about mm -hmm. it's not just progesterone and it's yeah. it's looking at estradiol it's looking at total testosterone and free testosterone mm -hmm. but i mean do you have kind of like a strategy that you use Absolutely. for women so simply so when you go in to see most clinicians if you walk into your standard ob gynies office or someone they're going to probably draw an fsh or excuse me an estradiol level if they're somewhat smart on this way they, they may draw an fsh but most often they're going to look at an estradiol but estradiol without fsh is completely useless so to come back to my analogy so let's say a woman's in menopause and her fsh is a 100 let's say i have two women that walk in with that same 100. clearly in menopause the brain is picked really ticked off when I replace estrogen, it, traditionally, most docs are just going to give you a dose. They're going to send you on your way, and they may up it to the next FDA-approved patch level, and then they'll, if your hot flashes go away, great, we've done our job, which is not the way to optimize hormones. We don't only want to control hot flashes and sleep and all these other symptoms that patients are having. We want to restore normal physiology so the body has the proper tools to repair itself and stay healthy and optimized right. while we age. So what's interesting is let's say I give a woman, both those women different estrogen products. What I should be watching is that FSH level. Watch it come down to normal. If it normalizes, I know that that dose for that patient, for that particular brain is perfect for that patient. I may need 
say six milligrams in a pellet for one patient or 20 in another, but I'm watching that FSH normalize. When it normalizes, that is right for that unique person. But most people don't follow FSH levels for test estradiol. They follow an estradiol level, and when they get to a certain estrogen level, they go, oh, you're high now, we're done, or if her hot flashes go away. But I could have 10 women all with an estradiol of 100. Some of them could be normal, some of them wouldn't, and the FSH is the only way to know. So you really need someone who knows what they're doing and knowing how to properly optimize. And testosterone, again, most folks don't even talk about it in women. And really testosterone levels, the, the way our labs are drawn, if you're checking just a total testosterone level, it's just testing what's in our bloodstream. It doesn't actually tell us what gets into our cells and you can have all kinds of disruptors or androgen resistance at the cell level. Or when you look at testosterone, it's only a partial part of our androgens. It's DHEA, androstenedione, dione, which none of the blood works test. So you have to right. follow symptomology based on our current methodologies and the patient and look, treat them to the level of where they feel better and all their symptoms improve without side effect and they don't have androgen. So there's ways to approach it and you can't couple that away from thyroid too. I mean, it's the axis. Right. Of so there, right. you need to look at the big picture and know you have someone that knows what to look for and what to do because you want to optimize it for each individual patient. So we restore young, normal physiology, not that we just alleviate symptoms. Do you work with people via telemedicine? Mm -hmm. We do all the time. So um, largely in our clinic, I, I, mean, I saw patients for 25 years, but I have trained several practitioners who now do the lion's share of the clinical day-to-day -day management where I'm out educating and doing other things and see a certain level of patients. But we absolutely see people live. We do telephonic uh, appointments all the time at drmintegrativehealth.com. That's if you can, most people can reach us there. So I've got but, all your websites and your socials yeah. up here right now, but I mean, you would want, so if somebody wanted to work with you directly right now, which site would you have them go to? Well, the, the, I always say the all roads lead to my my main website, which is drhotflesh.com because that's my uh, nickname, <laughs> Dr. Hotflesh. That's awesome. So, so anybody can go there and there's all kinds of information, links to my book. There's also links where if you scroll down, you'll see where the clinic paid, how to get to our clinic, which is for the medical care. So there's lots of stuff for the consumers, but then right, also right. medical professionals. That's spelled wrong. Is that wrong? DR that? Hot Flush? Is that is DR? perfectly correct. And then uh, also there's medical professionals who want to learn more on how to train in this area. There's a tab for medical professionals, which will take them to my Hormonal Health Institute where we do all the training side. So drhotflash.com can lead everybody to everything they should need. And then I, as I said, go there. And then I highly encourage people to go to savemycompounds.com to get more information about what's going on too. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, you're a voice of reason. I really appreciate you coming on the J. Campbell podcast. You, maybe, oh, I mean, you, you, you had a lot to say, but I, I definitely want to give you kind of like a, a last say, I want, you know, just kind of your opinion. Um, where are we going from a standpoint of do you, you know, it's a yes or no kind of opinion question, but uh, do you see 2022 or 2023 being years that they do finally restrict hormones for the average person? And what would you tell somebody if that happens? Oh, I am hoping to God that that doesn't happen. And that's why these efforts by like minded self, folks like myself, that we're fighting the good fight. Um, and and really, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on patients because the doctors really in the mass community are not going to fight this fight. It's really going to be driven by patients. And the women who are listening right. to this program, I implore you to get involved politically and get with your representatives. Go to that SaveMyCompounds.com and find out ways you can help. Because if it does happen, we're going to be in a boatload of hell. Uh, it's going to be hormonal health for patients. And they're not going to be able to get the resources they need. And unfortunately, we're going to have to get very, very creative in that regard. And folks like myself, hopefully, if that scenario came about, we're still going to continue to fight and we'll find creative ways to get around and treat women the way they deserve to be treated. But um, that's going to put uh, that's going to put a lot of strain on folks like myself who do this. And but we have to keep fighting. It's a war that needs to win. And although we keep getting pushed back. To me, the way I see it, there's there's no other outcome than having to win this fight because we can't afford not to. I, I'm totally in agreement with you. You know, I I like to say that there's still darkness before the dawn. Yeah. And we are going to have to go through more, you know, reveals and more. Yeah. I would call it reality apocalypses for a lot of people because a lot yeah. of people, as you know, have not living in truth. And truth is the only thing from a universal law yeah. standpoint that will come out, right? So. 
Yeah. Whatever happens, I'm with you. We have to continue the fight. We have to continue to be voices uh, of reason yeah. and voices well, of awareness. Galileo. I mean, he was under house arrest to the right. day he died for believing right. that the earth revolved around the sun, and he was deemed a heretic. But now, and so right. I'm hoping that a bunch of us are like Galileo that eventually, in time, historically, we're going to be deemed as the uh, folks leading the frontier. They're going to beat this. So. I literally guarantee it. So again, you guys, uh, Dr. Rosa, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast you, today. So for all of you guys out there, ladies especially, please visit her website, drdrhotflash.com. Book a consult with her. If you are a clinician watching this show and you want to learn more about how to do this the right way, then also go on there, her site and figure out how you can connect with her. Uh, again, so much appreciated for you to come on the show. Yeah. You guys, remember, yeah, yeah. raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.